Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another episode about Maya and Arnold lighting. So in the past we have gone over all the legacy lights. Today we're going to go over Arnold lighting. So under Arnold lights, we are going to talk about photometric lighting. Photometric lighting is a different type of light. It's very similar to a spotlight, but it produces some really interesting patterns. So let's take a look. This is what it looks like. It's a very interesting icon. And if I try to render it right now, you'll notice that it really doesn't have much of an effect. Uh, this is just a basic studio lighting and it really, you can't even see a little pool of light. And the reason why it's because this particular light needs a file. And this file is called an IES. And IES stands for Illuminating Engineering Society. But what's really interesting is that the IES is now considered a file format. That means that it's like a JPEG and like a TIFF. It basically is now considered a lighting format that will produce particular types of patterns. So without going into too much in depth, I'm going to show you a picture. And what happens is like these files, these IES files will change your light into something that looks like this. So instead of a really basic cone, which is what, let's say a uh, spotlight gives you, you can actually control the light by giving it these type of patterns. And you may be wondering why would you want to do that? And the reason why is because our light bulbs and realistic lighting does is not a simple cone. It actually has a lot of patterns. So for example, you can have this type of lighting and notice how the light kind of falls off like here and here and has an interesting pattern. Or for example, you can get this type of lighting where you get these interesting patterns. Um, even though this scene may be 3D, it's kind of hard to tell because the lighting is so realistic. And the only way to produce this type of realistic lighting is by using an IES file. So another thing is how do you get this type of lighting, right? You use IES files. And just to show you, I know it says Blender here, but the concepts are still the same. Um, they produce this type of pattern using a um, this format here. I actually don't know how this works. I just saw this and wanted to share. If anybody wants to post in the comments about how IES files works, you're more than welcome to. I'm more of a user than a than somebody that builds these things. But uh, but yeah, you have that type of information. Here's another example. You see how these got how these lights have nice patterns on them. I'm gonna create those in Maya. All right, so the first thing you need to do is download the files. You can download these at academicphoenixplus.com as well as you can download the scene. So uh, if you wanna follow along, you are more than welcome to. Another thing you need is, uh, this is a very handy JPEG. It tells you what the patterns are like. So uh, you'll be able to make some informed decisions and let's try it out. All right, so here is my photometric light and I'm gonna click on this little folder and look for it. You might wanna put your IES files in your source images so that you can find them quickly. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, so the IES folder is in source images. I'm gonna open it up and let's just go ahead and try number one. I'm gonna go ahead and click load. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna render this out. And we can't see very much. So it might be helpful if I go to my outliner, so Windows outliner, and I'm gonna hide the lights that I currently have. So control H, here's my photometric light. And we'll see if the light is just, there it is. Can you see how it's just barely there? Um, this is an emissive map. It does look like it's glowing and it is emitting a little bit of light, but it's just a uh, emissive map. So let's increase our intensity. I'm gonna go ahead and increase it to 10. So can you guys see how it's got this nice little rings? And just to really push it, let me increase my exposure to two. And I'm gonna press this against the wall so we can really see the pattern. It's really important to test out and see how these lights work on our on our scene so that we can make you know informed decisions. I'm gonna scoot this over, press play, and now we have this really cool effect. If I press this a little closer to the wall, there we go. The closer I get to the wall, the stronger the effect is. So this is a really fantastic way of starting to light your environment in a way that's realistic. Let's take a look at a couple more. I'm gonna go ahead and press stop and let's try number two. Where'd it go? There it is. All right, so this one's a little stronger on the outskirts. It still has a little base in the center, but it's still pretty neat. Um, let's take a look at number four. If I can find it, there it is. 
So this one's really neat because it's got this cone, but it's got this really hot center at the in um, well at the center. So uh, it gives you a really cool effect. Um, number nine's really interesting too. I'm trying to find like different ones so that we can mess around, we can see the difference. Wow, that one's wild. This would be really nice for the ones that are on the ceiling. Now you can do some research and find out what light source. So for example, if you have a specific bulb, there are uh, resources out there that will make a connection between, okay, this light bulb emits this type of pattern. It's up to you if you want to follow that. Um, I personally just like the artistic way of doing things, which is just kind of, if it looks good, I'll choose it. Otherwise, if you want to be more like, if you're a little bit more in the detail oriented, it has to look exactly right, then I would recommend that you do a little research and on IES lights. I want to use an IES light on this lamp. Let's try 14. That might be a little power, might be a little strong, but you know, we'll play around with it. All right, so I have this bulb. I'm going to, this light source, I'm going to go ahead and bring it in close to my lamp. I'm going to snap it, V middle mouse and snap. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. Probably want to be just outside of that bulb. And let's see the effect. It's probably going to be too strong. Yep. But it really emphasizes the, the area that I want the viewer to look at, which is the screen. So let's go ahead and decrease the exposure of this light source. Uh, maybe if I decrease, let's see, exposure to one. And I'm going to warm it up a little bit. It is supposed to be a bulb, and bulbs are a little bit warm. So I'm going to scroll down right here use color temperature. I'm going to just kind of warm it up a little bit by decreasing the temperature. That's how it works in Kelvin. And, uh, but for us, yellows means warm. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Just kind of warm it up a little bit and still think it's a little strong. Let me decrease this to a five. So now I'm getting some really nice effects. All right, let's bring back all of the other lights. Shift H to unhide and let's see what we have. There it is. I'm going to just move this just a little bit. Rotate it just a little bit this way so I can kind of focus more on the picture. Still feel it's a little strong, so let's go ahead and reduce the intensity just a little bit more. So just by changing your light source from a, let's say a spotlight to a photometric light, you can see the difference in the environment and how it changes. It's very subtle right now, but it starts to look a lot more realistic than with just a regular spotlight. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, let me show you just one more thing. So what's really neat about this particular download is that it does come with a Maya file. And if you open up the Maya file, you're gonna see a shelf with a bunch of photogrammetry lights. And each, and each of these lights is connected with one of the values. So here's one, here's two, and so on and so forth. So when you render it out, you get something like this. It's very similar to the JPEG that is provided by the file. So now you get to see it in full glory, all of the amazing lights that IES can provide and how the pattern looks like. So it's pretty neat and it's beautiful. So remember to use these type of lights when you are trying to push your lighting to the next level. So if you're creating an architectural piece, an interior piece, for example, or maybe even somebody carrying a flashlight, you want to use an IES light because it will definitely increase the quality of your work. And it's a very simple thing to do. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, feel free to post uh, any comments below. You can always message me uh, through Facebook and also you can check out my academicphoenixplus.com website and sign up for my newsletter. So again, thank you everybody and I will see you next time.